God of War Ragnarok has been a wild and thoroughly engrossing journey. When choosing which topic to start with, it had to be the god that I was most disappointed about not seeing in the previous game, Heimdall. As always with these videos, we'll take a look at how these characters were depicted in traditional Norse mythology, go over some of the original stories, and then the part they played in the game, as well as any major differences. There of course will be major spoilers, so if you have yet to finish the game, you have been warned. The first time we see Heimdall is when Atreus is climbing the wall of Asgard, and he appears to be keeping watch. From this interaction and Heimdall's snarky, dismissive and condescending tone, we can tell that he is not a pleasant god to be around, and in my opinion, easily a contender for the biggest douchebag of the series award, along with Odin. Once in Asgard, before meeting with Odin, Atreus is tormented some more by Heimdall, with Thor being the unlikely saviour and voice of reason. We see Heimdall demonstrate his super speed, but we hear from Odin that he can also read minds and has exceptional skills of perception, he just isn't much of a people person. But what about Heimdall in Norse mythology? Here Heimdall is the god responsible for keeping watch for invaders and the signs that Ragnarok is upon as god's doorstep. He lives in a place where the sky meets the Bifrost known as Himingbjorg, the protector of the bridge in and out of Asgard. He has extremely heightened senses, being able to see and hear things no human nor most gods could detect. The foreknowledge we see in the game also exists here, being able to see events just before they happen. This is why he has the Galahorn, so he can signal to those in Asgard that the invaders have arrived just before it actually happens. Ironically, in the game, the horn is used to unite all the realms against Asgard and summon Surt to begin the final battle of Ragnarok. Heimdall is also referred to as the whitest of gods, as well as being born from nine sea maidens, so the circumstances surrounding his birth are slightly weird. He also has gold teeth, which we do see in the game, and his dislike for Atreus or Loki is also mirrored. At the final battle of Ragnarok, Heimdall and Loki kill each other, so not exactly the best of friends. Back to the game, Heimdall makes it known that he knows Atreus plans to betray Odin, and throughout the game it's no secret that he despises Atreus or Loki and looks forward to killing him. Heimdall is described as the most devoted follower and believer of Odin. Hearing of the prophecy that states Atreus will be killed by Heimdall, Kratos has no choice but to kill Heimdall first, although this is no easy task. Luckily, Brock, however, has a plan for Kratos. Using the magical ring Dropnir, which has the ability to duplicate itself, they can bind the ring to a weapon and create a magical spear that can duplicate itself, hoping that all of these duplication shenanigans can overwhelm Heimdall's senses. When Kratos finally encounters Heimdall, we get the boss fight that's been building for a while. As the fight continues, we see that Heimdall can slow down time briefly, as well as having the ability of conjuration. When Kratos cuts off his arm, he spawns himself a new spectral arm. Brock's plan is a success as Kratos is able to defeat Heimdall, and despite the prophecy, he chooses to spare him. Accepting that Kratos, who he deems as lesser, is willing to take pity and spare him is too much for Heimdall. After some insults and the inability to acknowledge that he is beaten, he gives Kratos no choice but to kill him, even calling him a monster just before he dies, which is ironic coming from someone who just threatened to kill a man's child. Anyway, thus ends the story of Heimdall.